Hey, this is Dr. K from I Medical School, here to talk about holosystolic murmurs. Make sure to watch our other medical videos at our YouTube channel, I Medical School. All right, just to end the suspense, let's talk about the murmur quiz from our last video. Example one was normal. Example two was a physiological split of S2. And example three contained a murmur. To better understand murmurs, we need to talk about how we define and describe murmurs. We describe murmurs in several ways. The characteristics that define a murmur include intensity or grade, frequency, timing, shape, location, and radiation. Murmurs are graded on a scale of 6 for systolic murmurs and 4 for diastolic murmurs. Grade 1 indicates a faint murmur that is difficult to auscultate. Grade 2 is a faint murmur that can be identified easily. Grade 3 is a moderately loud murmur. And grade 4 is a loud murmur where you can feel a thrill or vibration on the chest wall. Grade 5 is a murmur that is loud but still needs a stethoscope to appreciate, while a grade 6 murmur can be heard even without using a stethoscope. In addition to intensity, pitch is important to describe a murmur. We are trying to hear if the murmur is high-pitched or low-pitched. The quality of the murmur can be another descriptive feature, such as if the murmur is musical, rumbling, or scratchy. The configuration of the murmur is also very important. Configuration describes how a murmur changes with time. For example, a crescendo-decrescendo murmur is when a murmur rises in intensity, then decreases, while a decrescendo murmur decreases in intensity with time. On the other hand, a crescendo murmur increases in intensity, and a plateau murmur remains unchanged. Next, location is important. For example, is the murmur best heard at the apex or peristernally? The last descriptive feature of a murmur is timing. Murmurs can occur in systole, diastole, or as continuous murmurs, meaning in both systole and diastole. Timing can be broken down further. Systolic murmurs can be further defined as mid-systolic, holosystolic, early systolic, and late systolic, depending on when they occur in systole. Diastolic murmurs can be characterized as early diastolic, mid-diastolic, and late diastolic. We will review the major and most commonly tested murmurs over the next several videos, but realize there are other murmurs that do exist besides the one we cover. We will start with holosystolic murmurs. There are three major heart abnormalities that cause a holosystolic murmur. These are mitral regurgitation, tricuspid regurgitation, and ventricular septal defect. Mitral regurgitation is the first holosystolic murmur we will discuss. Mitral regurgitation is when the mitral valve is floppy, resulting in the backflow of blood across the valve. It is best heard when a patient is lying down on their left side called the left lateral decubitus position. It sounds like this. The mitral regurgitation murmur is a high-pitched murmur that can radiate to the left axilla or armpit and to the back, specifically at the bottom portion of the scapula, otherwise known as your shoulder blade. Occasionally, with severe mitral regurg, you may hear an S3, that is the third heart sound. Common causes of mitral regurgitation are mitral valve prolapse, rheumatic heart disease, and infective endocarditis. The next murmur is tricuspid regurgitation. Tricuspid regurgitation is best heard using the diaphragm of the stethoscope. The best location to listen to tricuspid regurgitation is at the second and third intercostal spaces of the left sternal border. It sounds like this. <laughs> Occasionally, the murmur will radiate to the apex of the heart and can be confused with mitral regurgitation. Now, two features help distinguish tricuspid regurgitation, and these include the location, as we discussed, but also how it changes with breathing. During inspiration, more blood volume is delivered to the heart because of decreased intrathoracic pressure. As a result, tricuspid regurgitation increases during inspiration. This is called Carvello's sign. The reason this occurs is that during inspiration, there's a decrease in the intrathoracic pressure, 
allowing greater blood return to the heart. Greater blood return means more regurgitant blood, blood moving the wrong way across the tricuspid valve, creating a louder murmur. Tricuspid regurgitation is most often secondary to pulmonary arterial hypertension. Lastly, let's talk about ventricular septal defects. This is when there is a hole between the ventricles, allowing blood to flow from the left ventricle, a high-pressure chamber, to the right ventricle, a low-pressure chamber. If significant right-sided heart failure results because of this defect, the flow will actually reverse, and blood will move from the right ventricle to the left. This reversal is called Eisenmeggers syndrome. Eisenmeggers can result in patients having dusky blue lips or fingers due to deoxygenated blood entering the arterial circulation. VSD call, causes a holosystolic, plateau-shaped murmur when the blood moves from left to the right. VSD sounds like this. Sometimes, this murmur is accompanied by a thrill or vibration felt on the chest. In the future, we will talk about other murmurs and how the physical exam maneuvers can help identify murmurs. Well, that was a brief review of holosystolic murmurs. I hope you liked this video. And if you did, give it a like. Please share this video with your friends and classmates. Place any comments down below. And most importantly, subscribe. This is Dr. K from My Medical School, and I'll see you next time.